Welcome to episode 2 of Backlog Weekend. The show where we take a look at the pile of my unbuilt plastic kits and we take the whole weekend to build, paint, and finish one. Now ironically, while we did finish painting and building a single kit, I did not finish editing the entire process. So for this second episode, I'll be showing you how I painted up the figures and diorama that we built in last week's episode. And I assure you for the next week, we'll be building a new kit and painting them, hopefully having them together in a single episode. So without further ado, here's how I painted my magnetized Star Wars Legion's diorama. So we're painting our guys, finally, and I'm just gonna do the visors because the visors are the innermost portion. We're gonna be using a couple of colors for the black because I wanna make the black really shiny. So we're gonna be using glossy black as a base color. I hate glossy black, but it's the darkest black I have right now. Then London gray as our first layer. Then we're gonna do dark sea gray as we uh, layer above to make it a bit more brighter. And then when we head on to the reflections, we get a light gray, a silver gray rather. And then we get just a regular white. I'll be doing that on the visor and some of the, in the hilts of the weapons here. So in this part, it's, we don't have to be super neat. I mean, although it is the visor, uh, it's the first layer. So whatever mistake we have, we can just base coat on top of it. So we won't be doing any fancy glazing with this process. We'll just be painting and layering on top. I hope this camera angle is a lot better for you guys too. So we're going to the London Gray. So this is what I do when most of my Eschen Gray is out or most of my paint is out. Or London Gray is out rather. So we'll just target the center bit of the visor. The part that we want it to reflect on. And that's just maybe the center portion. And London Gray is not that of a dark paint. And for his hilt, I'm just going to layer above the area where it's gonna be brighter. We're now doing the dark gray and we'll be edge highlighting on the hilt and we'll still be layering on the reflective visor. So when we go to the visor here, we go a bit closer to the center and it's more of a glaze consistency so it will blend, so almost dotted the center portion. But when we do the hilt of the weapon, it's now an edge highlight, but only edge highlighting the illuminated portion, the top portion. Things are that it will highlight, you can see that better. And when we're edge highlighting, remember to always take up a smaller space than the previous layer to slowly show that gradient. Now when we move to the silver gray, the silver gray will be the edge highlight to the black hilt and will still be a layer for the visor. And this will be the last color for our weapon hilts. Silver gray is actually a very close white as it is. So that's that's how as that's as stark we can get with the edge highlight of our gray. Just there. When it comes to the visor, it's still a bit of a glaze slash layer, and you wanna just do the really center bit. This is our smallest layer on the visor and it's just going to prepare us for that dot of white. So we're moving on to the white. So at this point, we can actually just draw a line and go a bit over the helmet if you prefer, because you'll be covering that anyways. Right there. Next, we will be working on the inner clothing. This is a bit of a more purple color so it's gonna be like the, the pants here some of the arm stuff and that's it and like the insides gonna be really purple so the colors you're gonna use for that are these colors right here and what I'm gonna be employing is I want to try texturizing the inner cloth because the outer cloth looks more uh, defined or silky so I want the inner cloth to look more rough and textured. So the mixture of pink horror and black is just gonna be applied on the areas that are dark. 
and we'll just slop it on because we'll be covering most of it with the other layers. I could touch the cloth above because I'll be layering over that anyways too and I'll be using it as a semi shade so any areas that I want shaded as well I'll be covering that so it's a very dark purple so what we're doing here is we're just following where all the black spray paints are and using that as our guide to where to put our darkest value and also any of the areas that we feel like will have a shadow cast because it's uh, in between something we'll have that there the rest I will just base coat with just the pink horror and that will be the lighter non-shadowed areas that we'll be focusing on later when we highlight so I'll just take pure pink horror and apply that to the brighter areas and it's okay if it doesn't blend it's okay that if you cover up some areas the idea is we're blocking out which areas will be shaded which areas won't be I'm applying a mid-tone of our shadow color and our base coat to smoothen out that transition and it's looking beautiful and I'm doing it in a little bit of a stipple motion as well so that it alludes to the stippling fashion of highlights that we are gonna be doing later so when we stipple we want it to be a little bit of a glaze consistency but still show that hard edge to show some texture so what I'm just doing is I'm just scratching the surface in one direction of the pink or and then what I can do to even make it more convincing is I'll mix this highlight color of pink horror with the warlord purple and make that the in-between stippling to just add more tonal variation so already you've got a first layer of stippled texture then our second layer is a mid-tone of the base tone and the, te the first texture and I'm just stippling that on there so it's a very quick process because it's a small area that we need to do and now we'll move on to the heavy warm gray of stippling and what we'll do now is this will be a bit more stark than our pink so you should be able to see this a bit more better I'm just gonna lick off the excess and you just want very very minute lines and only the top portions to show like scratches of light on that since we just applied the heavy warm gray we're gonna go back and mix it with the previous layer and that will be the mid-tone and then I'll stipple that again and with this stippling only applying just at the top just at the edge it's sort of almost an edge highlight just right non silk smooth texture now I know this might not be as accurate to the lower but I just want the purple or the inner cloak to be a bit contrasted to the smoothness of the outside cloak and finally we're gonna do a mix of heavy warm gray and white and then we're gonna go a step down after applying stippling of this we're gonna go a step down and just apply stippling of that again to just re-blend the two layers so in this step you don't want your paint to be too runny or watery because you do want fine lines here you don't want to exactly glaze it you're the finer the lines the more you can give off the illusion that there is texture in your cloth and that really helps bring out the tonal variety of what you're trying to do so what I'm doing now is just really the final dots of highlights that I just want to show the more different dots and different colors or shades there are, the more it looks like there's a gradient or a blend from afar. Now for the outer cloak, we won't be doing any stippling because I want it to appear as smooth of a material as possible. 
So we're still going with our black here and we're mixing that with just model color red over here. And then we'll be layering on gory red and then we'll be layering on bloody red. As we layer, it's the same thing. When we move up, we move a half step down to sort of blend the two layers together. So we're going to make this a shadow layer, which is our gloss black and red. And then we move up to a gory red. And then the in-between of these three colors is what I'll use to blend them together after I layer on gory red. And so on and so on and so on. So for the cloak, I blocked out the shadows first and then I will block out the base coats with red. So what we're doing is just we're just blocking out the reds, the base colors, and the shadows. And we can be incredibly fast and incredibly messy here because we'll be blending them with their mid-tone just like how we did the purple earlier. And the idea here is we're just mapping out what are the areas we want dark, what are the areas we want light, and we'll just build up from there. I actually like that it's more dominantly dark because most of the time we always see these guys all bright and everything and maybe they might look a bit more sinister when they are darker and then that would give me the ability to add more contrast when I apply the red helmet and I make that bright red and maybe the helmet could stand out and the cape could stand out basically uh, instead of just having a pure red miniature I have a red miniature with different types of material or different sheens on them. It should be a very interesting miniature. And now what I'm going to do is we're going to mix black and red and red together to make like a two is to one, red is to black mid-tone and use that to blend the two colors. So that's this color right here. And we'll try to blend those rough edges together to see if we can get a smoother gradation. So I'm going to apply this more on the shadowed area because I want to brighten it up a little bit, just a little bit. Because I feel like there's more shadow than there is base color. So this is a glaze consistency. And when it dries, the brush marks should be less visible. And the transparency of this middle tone should simulate the idea of a transition between the two hard edges of the two colors. So now we're going to apply uh, the next brighter red, which is the gory red. And I'm just going to layer that or glaze that on top of the areas where there's red over here and whatnot, and brighten up the areas that are seen by the light. So if I layer this gory red is very transparent, it should be easy to just like layer on the red, brighten that up a bit and just build up that color and layer up that color. And because you have more solid colors underneath, the transparency of this color really helps simulate the idea that you did some quick blending. We just did some gory red, and I'm gonna step it down a bit by mixing in a one is to one red and blending the previous layer with the most recent one. And we're using that to blend the two colors that we just had. So again, because we have a dark undercoat and we have transparent paints on top, it's very easy to blend this. When they dry, you'll barely see the brush marks and you can sort of just layer on the areas that you feel aren't covered as much. The next color would be bloody red. This is more of an orange and this will be my thick highlight for the cloth. We're just really literally hitting the raised areas, trying to make it look more pronounced and increase that contrast from the black-red mixture, which is the first layer or the shadow layer. And I want to just... That orange just adds that oomph to it and it makes it look so much drastic, the shine, like a old renaissance painting 
where the shadows are really stark and the brightness and the bright lights are very stark as well and I kind of like that that's basically how dark he will look damn he looks incredibly dark makes me a bit nervous actually but I want to keep going I may have gone too far with the shadow to be honest I might have enjoyed that too much but I would say it has a mood and we're already reaching the half point of Sunday so I don't think there's time to go back let's just see how it goes when you push forward and it's the same colors you will use for the helmet but the proportions of shadows are a lot smaller and the proportions of brighter colors will be a lot larger and we will accentuate that by adding a silver gray and a white as a reflection point so the helmet should really shine compared to the darkness of the cloak the main difference with how we're gonna paint the helmet is we won't be blocking out the shadows in the base colors like how we did the previous parts we will just base coat this whole thing red and then pin wash or pin shade using the shadow tone to make it look like a solid color with no blending so the shadows will be stark and the shadows will just be lines and afterwards we'll just be glazing up into the brighter areas to make it look like reflective metal let's start with base coating with just the color red now remember we already colored the visor here so we just can't go all willy-nilly and most of the miniature is painted so we, we really can't go willy-nilly and everything so what i like to do is just outline everything that we're not supposed to touch so we know our boundaries just like how we would do a coloring book back in the day we would just color the outline so i think he looks fabulous the helmet is already standing out that's proving to look really good i like it so i didn't follow the zenithal here because we'll try to replicate that reflectiveness that you see with our acrylic paint and now i'm gonna add the shadow tone but only to pin wash it or apply it in the recessed areas to show like a hard shadow to make it look like it's not cloth there shouldn't be a gradient between shadow and light and we're still using the same black red combo for the shadow and i'll just be lining it into the recess area so like for this area right here just the bottom of the helmet and just line that up just to add the definition of shadow coming through. And if it's too thick, we can just fix it up when we highlight later. So we're just adding a thin line of shadow there. And we'll also add this shadow in between the helmet itself and the cloak just to really separate the two. Even though they're both red, I just wanted to register that it's a different material and that's the only shadow we're gonna have compared to the bottom of the cloak where it's so shadowed the helmet hardly has shadow because we want it to be very very bright since it's a sphere or something like that I want the highlights just to be on this area it's right here in the front going down to show that it is that it is that shape and the next highlight color is gonna be the same as before, gory red, but this time it's a little bit more solid. We won't be blending it as much. Careful not to touch the shadow. And we're just gonna layer just unshadowed bit and go downwards. And we're gonna go the same way around. Not touch the shadow bits and downwards expand that a little bit so for the next part it's bloody red we're gonna layer on the it's the same layers as the bottom of the cloak we're just gonna layer it on top again of the helmet just to enhance the highlight we initially established again we're just gonna take the top part not touch the shadow 
and go around. Up and around. And not just touch the shadow. And just cover a smaller area than you previously covered. On the cloak, we stop there. And I, I want to make it more reflective. So we'll get to a heavy warm gray lighter color. As you can see, we've edge highlighted the front. So we're going to just edge highlight the front part. Just to reinforce that initial line on top. And this one at the bottom. And this one here. This one here. And what I want to do is add like a little streak here. There you go. And I want to add a little streak at the bottom here. And here. So we got like a really dark cape and some thickly edge highlighted helmet. And now I'm just going to add some white to dot the top of the helmet and I'll just put like a dot right here to just simulate some shine and that's uh, all the red of this Imperial Guard very very dark looking Imperial Guard so for our browns we have three colors it's a very dark brown on the gloves we have our ever common gloss black which I hate, olive brown. Just slot it on there. So we won't be edge highlighting or doing any highlighting on this as much because I don't want the brown to come out. Uh, it's a dark literature. And that brown will stick out like a sore thumb if I do. And this is just the olive brown without the mix of black. And that will be in the top layer. For the mid-tone, it's just a mix of those two colors again to get them to blend together. And then for the rest of the staff, it's just going to be a metallic airbrush color, which is my favorite metallic color so far, magnesium acrylic airbrush color. And then we're going to layer up or we're going to edge highlight it with some game color silver. This is how it looks like. The whole mini sort of completed. So far I think he looks okay, despite the time we spent. Yeah, it's a bit too dark for my taste, but I want to see how it, they all look together on the diorama with everything. And now it's time for the base. And for the base, we are just going to glaze on some bluish colors that are very dark in the movies they have like a bluish light that's very dark in the Empire's room and I want to replicate that so we're gonna start with some contrast we're gonna use Talos her blue and we're just gonna use that as her first uh, layer of base or glaze rather and just push all the paint down so that's just one load brush and just to make sure all the paint goes down and that the other opposite end Remains dark, we're just gonna feather that. By putting it some water, that brush, and pulling away. So that's got a nice little blue tinge. And then we're gonna add another glaze of P3 format. It's my only blue, dark blue of Exile Blue. And then we're gonna go a little half lower, or more lower, or start lower than we did from the Talisar blue. So it's like we're layering on and then feathering again. See that? Then we move on to some McCrag blue and do the same thing, but again with less area space. So we start from here. See that? Now it gets a little brighter. And then now maybe we don't need to feather it there because it's still wet. And then last but not the least is we're going to have some Ultramarine from Vallejo. And just sort of line the edge. We don't want this blue to be very bright. We just want to suggest that dark blue. 
blue light that comes from the Emperor's throne room. And you'll see I've done it with this guy over here. And there's just that faint, that faint bl blue light coming from the side. And behind him there's none. And I did the rest of these guys. And uh, what I did is I also did the same thing with the diorama base. Um, and I did that using a much larger brush. So to finish this off, I will start to edge highlight just some of the areas of this diorama with first exile blue, a dark blue, and then followed up with a thinner layer of macrag blue because I just want to highlight the little greeblies a little bit more and accent or match the blue light that comes from below and that's gonna look beautiful and then when I mount the minis I varnish everything so that all the finishes match because you can still see some of the black patch ups but when I varnish that with the matte varnish it should be all good with work coming in the way and my will to create more videos with the vlog I will admit my personal painting cue has quite slowed down so this new show has sort of also been my hit two birds with one stone type of solution where I both take a stab at my backlog and hopefully create entertaining and yet useful content for you guys at home and what a weekend it has been just to create these guys. Thank you so much for watching and joining me in the first ever episode of Backlog Weekend. And I hope that you guys learned something or that I hope you guys stayed until the very end and that you were very much entertained. I hope it was something that you guys proved useful and also made you guys subscribe. I plan to do more of these. It was quite stressful and fun. And I, I do like the fact that I can do more painting videos now. And I aim to do something more interesting every time and I aim to sort of destroy more of my backlog and it's, I'm looking forward to seeing my backlog both grow and shrink as we move together week by week episode by episode so thank you everybody for staying I hope you enjoyed my name is Louis of Louis Loves Minis and reminding you to hobby every day to keep the sprues away <laughs>